Good Monday morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day and your week off to a great start. And the way we do that here in First Five is by spending time together every day in the Word of God and in prayer. And so what we do on here on First Five is every morning, every weekday morning, I invite you to join me in reading one chapter from the Bible. And so chapter by chapter, we are working our way through, through various books of the Bible, mostly through the New Testament. And right now, we are studying our way through the book of Acts. And so, so today, we come to Acts chapter 20. And so uh, my invitation to you, my hope would be that uh, when we're all done the lesson, You'll take a moment and you will read the whole of Acts chapter 20. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to just zero in on a certain portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 17 to 24. So if you want to grab your Bible, or if you're on your computer, you want to pull it up on your phone, you can Google it, you can go to your Bible app if you have that downloaded, and you can join me in Acts chapter 20, beginning in verse 17. Here we write. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God and to, in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. However, I would consider, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Man. I don't know about you, but I want to have a faith like Paul's. I mean, he is caught in this sort of life-altering conflict. As you, as you read the whole chapter, you're going to see it. On the one hand, he knows that serious trouble awaits him when he arrives in the city of Jerusalem, the center of the Jewish faith. Jerusalem, of course, is the heart of Judaism. It's the it's the place of the temple. It is the home of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. And Paul has been one of the most vocal, outspoken, bold advocates of Christ. And worse than that, he is a Jewish evangelist for Christ, primarily among Gentiles. Remember, Paul was a Jew. He was a Pharisee, right? He was very active and engaged in his Jewish faith, but when he came to Christ, he began to go out and preach the gospel, and he would preach to other Jews, but more than that, he often preached to Gentiles, which was just absolutely anathema to other Jews. They couldn't even imagine all of that. And so, for Paul, to say the least, is this persona non grata, basically, among the Jews. He is not accepted. He is actually greatly despised because they feel as though they've, that he's turned his back on his Jewish faith and now he's undermining it. So Jerusalem is far and away the worst place that Paul can be found. And yet, Paul is preparing to return to Jerusalem to put his life at risk. But at the same time, he is convinced 
that God is calling him there. And so he has this conflict of knowing that it's dangerous, but at the same time feeling as if that's where God wants him to be. And he doesn't really necessarily know exactly why, but he knows that God has some purpose for him being there because God has been very clear in calling him. And he trusts that God has a plan, that God has a purpose in him going to Jerusalem. So, in faith, he leaves for Jerusalem. He leaves these people behind in Ephesus. He knows well that he will, in all likelihood, he's fairly certain that he will never see these people from Ephesus again. These people that he has poured his life into and just really become so uh, connected to in the faith, right? And I gotta say, Every time I read chapter 20, verse 24, I am moved and honestly convicted and challenged. I mean, let's listen to it again. Chapter 20, verse 24, Paul says, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of Jesus. I wish I could say that I had a faith like that, to pursue God's calling with complete disregard for the risk, without fear, without hesitation. How does he do that? How does Paul have such boldness to do that. Well, I think there are really three things at play here. First, he believes, he knows that his calling is truly from God. That this work that he does is of God and it's what God called him to do. Secondly, he believes that God is genuinely with him. That doesn't matter what he faces, he will not face it alone, that God will be there. And thirdly, he has the complete assurance of his salvation. In other words, he knows where he's going. He does not want to die, but he has the full confidence that in this promise from Jesus, this promise of eternal life, no matter what happens, he'll be okay. The worst thing they can do is take his life here on earth, and as he said in his letter to the Philippians, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I want to live with such a confidence in God's calling and such a faith in the promise of eternal life that I don't even have to fear death itself. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, it is inspiring to hear Paul speak in this way and to hear him talk about fearing not even death, because he has such an assurance of his promise of eternal life. Lord, give us strong faith. Help us to be inspired by Paul's example and help us to live out our calling to share your good news with the world as boldly and courageously as Paul did. In your name we pray, amen. All right, everyone have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.